my son wanted a Corvette, which he got on his, incidentally got on his own. Uh, but one thing that uh, I had never, well, it was, uh, like I said, uh, when I, before I won the house, we lived in a, a, a very comfortable place, and I continually wanted to redecorate, like I wanted a stove, and I projected for a stove, and all of a sudden, uh, the contest was over with, and I won a thousand dollars, I didn't win a thousand dollars, I didn't win the stove. And I went to the contest club, and everybody had won in this particular contest. And I had such good entries, and I couldn't understand why I didn't win my stove. And so uh, I thought, everybody won televisions and everything, and I was perplexed on this. But two days later, so I won $1,000 in another contest. And so I rationalized, and I told the children, well, this is for my stove. I have $1,000. I thought it was coming by a stove, but this is my prize. I went out and bought a stove at Sears. Three days later, I have a phone call from this uh, uh, General Electric and said, uh, we overlooked um, telling you, Mrs. Hadsel, the prize, and it, it'll come in the mail, and it, you want a stove, a GE <laughs> stove. And I said, oh, I already bought one. And uh, he said, well, if you bought a GE, we would have given you your money back. But see, I got premature. And already. So this was something I learned uh, later on. Uh, always, I mean, there can be a delay in results. And yes, I taught the children. Uh, they were on their own and did their own coloring, and they had their own projects, and we were all very, very supportive of that. Later on, uh, there were always people that would call or come. And that's when I was prompted to write the book. I wrote the book simply because there was a demand for it. And I thought, well, maybe they'll leave me alone. I'm not a witch. And on the book, I put wishcraft in order to um, tell them that I was not using anything. But you still had people that would call and say, hey, you already won, oh, we won three Hammond organs. This is a church, and uh, can you do, donate one? Yes, I donated them all to different areas. There were things that, I mean, you know, I didn't put in my book. What kind of contests did your children enter, and how young were they when they started? Uh, my younger son, uh, the one, uh, this, this is my teenager. He was a teenager. And he's getting ready to go to college. And there were lots of things that he wanted. And this contest sponsored for teenagers write in uh, 50 words or less. Uh, oh, this was another one. My older son, 50 words or less. Uh, why you would like to represent the United States and Europe. And he wrote the most fabulous essay. It was really, really, it was very touching and very good. And he won his trip to Europe, toured Europe. The other son was a little more uh, materialistic. And uh, this was an opportunity. Uh, and he was just getting out, going to high school now. Uh, this was an opportunity to go to New York and to, you had to design a piece of jewelry. And you had to be a teenager, 12 to 14. Uh, the prize would be. Uh, this um, a diamond ring, a trip to New York. Uh, you would go to this uh, fabulous uh, place. Uh, I'm not interested in names of uh, people, uh, uh, you know, houses that uh, have um, clothing manufactured. I don't even remember, recall the name, but he did. And where you would pick out your wardrobe. He could pick out his wardrobe. He would get a Lindy Star Sapphire. He'd get a gold wristwatch, three days, and I think it was two thousand dollars in cash. Plus, the mother could come with him. Okay, he wanted that. Okay, so 
he goes out. I said, what are you going to do? He said, well, uh, the first thing you think of as a kid, and everybody then was having a guitar and imitating all these country westerns. And he says, the first thing they do, they did they think of a guitar and they, you know, uh, make it as a guitar. Uh, and I said, well, what's the other thing? He said, well, and he thought, and he thought, he says, I think I've got it. And he, he just picked up a piece of um, sheet music, and there's a staff there, and there's notes. And so he went out into the garage and uh, got the little wire, made the, uh, bend the wire, uh, the, the, the kind of wire that you use for soldering stuff, and made a staff. And then he took two of my beans and sprayed them, and he called it the Lindy Star Go-Go. And that was advertising Lindy Star Sapphires, and it was so damn original, who could possibly think of that? And then he did a step further. Further, He said, uh, he made it, he actually made it. And I said, well, why have you made it? I said, why did you send it to him with your entry? You know, he's seeing something. Is good. Mm -hmm. He got a little bo a box and mounts this thing in, and it was lovely, really, mm -hmm. and put it in and sent it in. I wonder how long it's going to take him to let us know I won all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So one day, it was, uh, I was sitting there, and uh, this morning I woke up, and I said, they're going to call us today. We've got to be here. And he was playing Little League, and he needed tennis shoes. And he said, I've got to get tennis shoes before the game is at 5 o'clock. I said, well, we'll go as soon as they call us. And I was waiting in the mail, or call us, or in the mail. Nothing came in the mail. And I'm sitting there, and he was the one that used to say, you don't know everything. Uh, later on, he changed it when my husband said, but she does know. And so from that period on, but you don't know everything, you'd get angry because this is a teenager. And so we're, um, I said, at four o'clock, now he has to be at Little League at five. And I thought, well, I missed that one. How could I miss that one? Uh, when you have a feeling, there's a knowing feeling. Uh, there's a calm feeling. And it's not like this, you know, like when you're waiting to have your name drawn at a, someplace. It's a different feeling. And I had this calm feeling. And so we get in the car. And he's in the car, and the phone rings. I had the door open, the phone rings. And I said, go in there and answer. Tell him your boy. Tell him your boy. And his name is Chris. He went in there, and the man, who am I talking to? Uh, this is Chris Hadsell. He said, uh, are you a boy or a girl? He says, I'm all boy. And they hung up the phone, and that was it. That was it. What they had done in New York, they were giving a prize top prize to one girl and one boy. And when they looked at Chris's name, they thought this might be a girl. So we got to find out. And when I was able to visit, when we went to New York, uh, the, uh, the people that judged, the judges were there and took us out to dinner because they wanted to meet the two top winners, the girl and the boy. Uh, the one girl the one woman that was a judge called me aside, and she said, we had so much great difficulty deciding on Chris and another boy, Michael or whatever. We knew Michael was a boy, but she said, I wanted Chris to win. And these guys already said, let's give it to Michael because he's a boy. Let's get out of here. And she said, I will do that on one condition. If you call Texas, and if Chris is a boy, will you give this to Chris? And that's what happened. One of the one of the judges called, and it was Chris, and that's how it was. Then another time that was, you know, sometimes it's real close. Another time, this younger son said, well, Mother, you won all these things, but you never won a car. And I said, I don't need a car. I was driving a Lincoln. I don't need a car. But just prove to me that you can win a car. And you don't need, ever need to prove anything. Uh, 
when you're taking a SILVA training, don't ever, Jose says, don't ever prove anything. Prove it to yourself. And so I thought, well, okay, I never want a car. Let's do this. And a local radio station was having a car, and they were giving Dodson's away. Okay, all you had to do was get by the phone, and at random, they would choose your name. And when they would call you, you would have to say, my favorite radio station is KLIF. That's all you had to do. And if you said that, then your name would be in a pot. And at the end of six weeks, they would draw one name a week. And at the end of six weeks, you were in the pot. And then you'd go to the dealership, and then you would draw which car you would win. So it was a very, you had to listen to that radio all day long. Because you never knew when they were going to call you. You just, so you had to stay home, and at that time there weren't cell phones. And so I was, um, the first week I listened all week long, and they called a name, and the man, uh, and of course they would put it over the telephone, uh, Mr. Hammond, so-and-so from, from Grapevine, uh, what is your favorite radio station? And he said, KLI for 1190 on the dial. Well, you're in the drawing now. You've won that. You knew you won a car when he said that. Well, the second week uh, was in the second week. I'm listening, and it was a Friday afternoon, and we had rental property, and my husband is out there fixing some of the water plumbing that was leaking, and the children were around, and so he called me and said he needed one wrench to help with this. But he couldn't go to get it because these children are out there and he had a hole and he was concerned about the children. Get that part. And I said, no, I can't because I'm, they're going to call me today. I know they're going to call me and I can't leave the house. He said, damn it, put them on hold. I need that part. Now get that part. He was very angry. So I got in the car and I had the radio on in the car and I'm a uh, getting his part, and I had to run all over town because this part, it was some kind of a wrench. Finally got it, took it out to where he was working, threw it down and ran, come back to the house. But on the radio station, I'm listening, and they said, we have the second week winner, and during the break, we will uh, play it for you. And I am devastated. How could that happen? I thought, I knew I had that car. And I come home and I am so disappointed in sitting there and he, he caused that because I know they called me and damn it, and I'm angry at him, really. A few minutes, the, radio, the station, I mean, telephone rang, it's my older son, the one that left and only comes back and brings his dirty laundry and checks his mail. And he, he called, he says, Mother, where were you? I said, I was out getting Daddy a, a part for some of the plumbing. He said, while you were gone, he said, the phone rang, and uh, uh, they asked, uh, who is, uh, what is, they just said, Mrs. Hadsell, what is your favorite radio station? And uh, you had, I had tacked up around the house, because I thought, if my husband calls, he's not into this. I said, when they call and ask what your favorite station is, say KLIF 1190 on your dial is your favorite. And he, there's the phone in the kitchen. And he looks up and it said, when they call, and he read, oh, my mother's favorite radio station is KLIF. 1190 on now. And the man says, Congratulations, you just won your mother a dot.